Hey friends, Pastor Tim here with you, Community of Grace Lutheran Church. It's time for worship, and we're glad to have you with us today. Uh, Before I tell you what we're talking about, I want to just give you a quick personal word. Uh, A couple days ago, August 25th, Jan and I celebrated our 43rd anniversary. And on Monday, just a couple days from now, she's going to be starting her last, what we hope is her last round of chemotherapy. And then after those two weeks, she'll have some tests done to sort of see where the cancer is at. And we're hoping then that she'll be on maintenance. And uh, I just want to say uh, for both of us how much we've appreciated your prayers, your support. Uh, People ask me all the time, how is Jan doing? That means a lot to us. And we're so grateful for the emails that we've been getting, the, uh, the messages on Facebook, the cards people have been sending. You have been a community of grace for us, and we're very, very appreciative. So today we are wrapping up a series we have been doing since Christmas Eve, Get Used to Different. And we've been looking at stories from the life of Jesus recorded for us in the Gospel of Luke and how radically different Jesus is. And today we've got what on the surface seems like a heartwarming story, but it's a really pretty radical story about Jesus and his relationship with the children. And we thought it would be great for you to hear from our new youth director, all the way from Chippendale Rescue Rangers. We've got Chip Wilson, our youth director, and Chip is here to share with you the message right now. One Sunday morning, nearly a decade and a half ago, I was at worship, awaiting communion. The historic church that I grew up in, uh, the church where I worshiped, was the place where I found my faith. It was the place where I sensed my call to ministry. It's the place where I first began to serve God's people. Uh, That place had now become a place where there was tension. There had been several conversations about my role and who I was and how, because of being honest with who I was about myself, that my community Um, no longer accepted me or wanted me the way that I was. Well, that morning, as I attempted to reach for the communion bread, the deacon holding the plate pulled it away from me and whispered to me, do you think you're worthy? I stood stunned. Was I worthy? Or should something separate me from Jesus? Well, person I am and the arrogance that I had at the time, I reached in, quickly snatched the wafer, took it in, and proceeded to go on to take the rest of the sacrament. But from that moment on, um, there was a sense of disgust that came over me, and I never worshiped in that place again. It was time for something different. Let us pray. Jesus, you open your arms to receive whosoever will. Yet we mask your inclusivity with our exclusivity. We transform your welcome into rejection. Change our hearts and minds. Help us to welcome those who the world may say have no place in your kingdom. Help us to realize that your grace has been poured out upon all people. It's in your name that we pray, who live and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and forever. Amen. Luke writes, people brought babies to Jesus, hoping that he might touch them. When the disciples saw it, they shooed them off. Jesus called them back. Let these children alone. Don't get between them and me. These children are the kingdom's pride and joy. Mark this, unless you accept God's kingdom in the simplicity of a child, you'll never get in. It's funny how we ignore children from time to time. Um, We've all heard the ridiculous sayings that children should be seen and not heard. And far too often, children even go without being seen. Um, Greg and I have spent time as being foster parents, and we have welcomed a variety of children into our home who have been ignored and neglected at the least. In the ancient world, for someone with the social standing that Jesus had gained by this point in time in the biblical narrative, it would have been, he would have been seen as just too busy to deal with children. They were unimportant, a distraction from the real work of the healing the adults who were in need. And sadly, this still happens today. As a foster parent, an educator, 
a religion and a religious leader, I have encountered situations like this from time to time. We just don't have time to help this child. This child is just too difficult. We just don't have the energy to do so many things to give this child the opportunities they need. You see, I've taught children whose parents refused to enroll them in occupational therapy because it didn't fit with their schedule. I served in a congregation where I was asked to exclude a child with autism from our youth group because the rest of the staff felt that he was odd and not safe to be around other children, even though he had never hurt anyone or anything. Even worse, when I told people that I was going to teach down in Maryville, their response was, wow, isn't that a bad part of town? Do you really want to work with those children? What's worse about statements of exclusive, exclusivity like this is that they're not only regulated to the children in our communities, but often to the adults as well. I've heard statements like, that guy's weird. Why are you wasting your time on him? Or, really, you're taking time to feed those people? Or wait, you think we should welcome that type of person into this place? It seems that in this world, seniors, seniors have been cast away. The homeless are people to ignore. We have created enmity with the outcast and the stranger. All this we have done to protect our priorities. Instead of accepting people whom God has created them to be, we have decided that those who are not like us should stay away from us. But what is Jesus really saying here in this text? Now, it's far too easy to just look at this text and say, oh, Jesus welcomes children, so we should too. Though I do agree that we should welcome children into worship. I've heard too many times, why is that kid in a place? It's too loud. They're too noisy. They move too much. But Jesus welcomes them, so we should too. But I think the bigger picture is that Jesus welcomes, period. Um, you see, this is just one instance in a long line of examples of those who were once outsiders being welcomed in by Jesus. In fact, we see Jesus welcome those possessed by demons, those who are Gentiles, people with illnesses, tax collectors, and even prostitutes. You know, in my day, we would have called the people that Jesus welcomed in a motley crew. But this string of those welcomed by Christ proves to us one important fact. The world is exclusive, but Jesus is inclusive. And isn't it funny how, isn't it funny how we get excited about exclusive things? We find ourselves jumping for joy about exclusive uh, uh, clubs and exclusive offers. We don't, we tout to people that we've gotten special treatment or special deals. But while I enjoy a Costco deal or a free cruise, the reality is that we can't change, transform the world with an exclusive gospel. We need an inclusive gospel that takes away the exclusion. We get it wrong when we shout out those who don't pray like us or worship like us or speak our language. Somehow, we have taken this invitation of come to all ye who labor and said at it, but not you. And I get it, being inclusive isn't easy. When you're inclusive, you have to deal with those who aren't like you. That's right. They may not look like you, they may not vote like you or love like you. And when you're inclusive, you have to make choices that you may not agree with. You may, have to support, you may have to deal with people who supported a candidate different from you or chosen a life that you don't really agree with or even worse, they're a Dallas Cowboys fan. Inclusivity is hard and it means making room for those who are at both extremes of the spectrum, those who have and those who have not. Those who are pro-choice and those who are pro-life, those who voted Democratic and those who voted Republican, it's not fun, it's difficult. You see, the Sunday after I was, after I was at night communion in my church where I grew up, things didn't sit well with me. That next week, I debated skipping worship altogether. I mean, how could I go to a church 
where they may no longer allow me to have communion. Was I even worthy to be in that building? But instead of skipping worship, I ended up on the doorstep of a congregation that I had only volunteered at a few times before. Um, I had no idea what to expect. I didn't even know what the Lutheran was. But I hoped that this small congregation in inner city Houston would be more kind to me than the one where I had spent my formative years. I sat through the worship service, and at communion, I heard the pastor utter these words. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't even have to be a Lutheran. All are welcome at this table. Did she really mean it? Could I be welcomed at that table of grace? Would I be accepted for who I was? So I figured I'd give it a try. I walked up to that altar that Sunday and was given communion. No questions asked. And before my very eyes, the thing that had once been exclusive had been transformed into inclusivity. Today's, in today's text, Jesus says, don't get between me and them. Yes, in this context, it's children. But that day, so many years ago, it was that guy who was trying to worship a God he loved. In some churches, it's the new sober 20-something-year-old who just wanted advice about how to start a faith journey. In some places, it's the widow who's trying to get used to life without her husband of over 30 years. Too often, we as the church find ways to stand in between the other and Jesus. But what if we stepped aside and let those who came to Jesus run to him with open arms? What if we let those who came to Jesus meet him unhindered and receive the same love and grace that we have? What if we just stood out of the way? John 3.16 is probably one of the most memorized Bible verses in all of history. But I often think that we don't put enough weight into what God is really trying to tell us in this text. You see, the Greek used here is an interesting noun. The noun is pos, uh, which literally means every or all or everyone or every created being. Yes, God gave Jesus for all, not just those like us, but each and every type of human, meaning there is no room for exclusivity in the life of a believer. Rather, we are called to work, to open our arms to all and to stand out of their way and let them come unhindered to Jesus. I teach the third grade, and um, every morning I stand outside of my door, and greet my kids with open arms. I offer them a hug or a handshake, a high five or a fist bump. And every morning, all 30 of my kids greet me in that way. Then I think about this table here, this table of grace where Jesus sits with open arms, calling each and every one of us. Jesus offers us a hug of compassion a fist bump of grace, a high five of salvation. Jesus welcomes each and every one of us at this place. And so, what do we have to do as the church? What are we called to do in a world full of different people with different ideas and, and different values? Well, I think we're called to get out of the way and let the other let the children come to Christ. And when we do that, we let God's kingdom come to life right here and right now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for joining us once again for our worship service today. And if you need us in any way, shape, or form to respond to you, a couple different ways you can do that. One, you can uh, go to the comments and just write us a little note on Facebook or YouTube, and we're going to respond to those. If you've got a prayer request, you've got a question, uh, that's one of the ways you can get a hold of us. If you're new, 
and you're watching for the first time, you can text the word NEW to 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484, and we'll send you a card to Starbucks. No questions asked. Just our way of saying thanks for joining us. Uh, we've got uh, a prayer team that includes your staff, and every day we have prayer requests that are sent to us. If you'd like your prayer requests sent out to our prayer team, text the word PRAYER to 623-295-2484. And if you'd like to know more about what's happening now as we move into the fall season, text the word EVENTS, and we will make sure that we send you a link to our website, boldrecklessgrace.org. So we're going to be celebrating communion here in just a moment. Before we do, we're going to hear from the band. They're going to get us ready to receive God's gift of grace. Good morning, everybody. Please stand up and help us sing today. the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body, broken for you, eat this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink and said, this is my blood, it's been poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the gospel, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the body of Christ, and it's broken for you. And as you eat your bread, as you eat your wafer, this is God's promise to you. And then as you drink the wine, as you drink the grape juice, God's promise to you is this. This is the blood of Christ, and it's shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Well, again, thanks for joining us. And uh, I want to take just a couple moments uh, to let you know that there are some ways that you can support the mission and ministry of Community Grace Lutheran Church. Uh, we have been involved in so many great experiences throughout this year, throughout the summer. And uh, we're kicking off a fall now where uh, we've got all kinds of opportunities ahead of us uh, to nurture our children, to nurture our youth, all of us in our faith, and at the same time reach out to our community and our world to make a difference in the world. So if you'd like to support this mission and ministry, you can text your gift to 623-295-2484. Uh, if you are texting that gift in the message, you just type in how much you'd like to give. You hit send to 623-295-2484. You can also turn on the camera on your phone, hold it up to that QR code, whoops, right here. You'd think I'd have it by now. It's right here. And um, you just uh, turn that on, and it will send you to some prompts. You can fill those out, and that will enable you to give. You can also go to boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving, boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving uh, for more ways that you can support this mission and ministry as we follow Jesus on the adventure of bringing God's grace to the world. So we are a week or two away now from our fall kickoff. And so we're going to start a week early with a brand new series. We're starting next week. How can I get my life back? And I'm really looking forward to this series. We're going to talk about some of the things that are really challenging us right now, things like exhaustion and depression and relational challenges. How can I get my life back? And Jesus has some great insights for us, some great stories that can help us begin to do that. So how can I get my life back? That's our new series begins uh, next weekend. Then we are kicking off our fall season, and a couple things we want you to know about women's ministry. Men will have more for you later. But women's ministry, you can see they've got their um, events starting. Uh, they've got a, a, a retreat experience on September 10th. And more information at boldrecklessgrace.org. You could email Brita at boldrecklessgrace.org as well. And then you can also see boldrecklessgrace.org slash women's ministry for their Bible studies coming up starting September 13th. And again, men, we'll get back to you on ours too. We start September 10th. So on September 11th, we have our official kickoff. Uh, that'll happen here live uh, in the worship center uh, because it's hard to bring the ice cream truck to you so if you want to have ice cream on September 10th, uh, just kind of have some ice cream available, and then you can join us. But we'll have the ice cream truck here on September 11th. And at that time, our children's ministry is going to re-kick re off. Uh, we have our Discovery Club in between the two services. That's for kindergarten through fifth grade. You can see the theme, Surf's Up. And um, so you can either come to the 9 o'clock and stay for a half hour, or you can come early and then worship at 1030. And then our youth starts up as well with Chip and his team. And from 11.45 to 1.15 starting September 11th. And there will be a meal right after the second service for families that want to stay and then go directly to youth. And then I'm going to be doing a Thinking Person's Guide to Faith. I'm going to be doing this occasionally and looking at some of the, the hot topics that are happening here where our faith merges with culture or at least intersects with culture. We're going to talk about Christian nationalism. You're hearing a lot about it lately. What is it? Is it good for the country? Is it good for Christianity? And uh, I'm going to do a little interview with someone, and then uh, we'll have some live experience as well. You, if you'd want to join me uh, in-house, you can do that, or you can watch online. All the information for all of this, boldrecklessgrace.org. And so now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you, be gracious to you, and may the Lord always turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go bold. Live grace.
Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here in us. All right, lift your voices. Help me now. Jesus, there is no one. 